This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I'm James Just. we got John Cameron in the middle today, and down at the other end is Richard Fields. Gentlemen, time names their person of the year. Well, I guess it's people of the year. They named Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as, as their people of the year. I'm not sure. I guess you just have to get elected to get a people of the year now, I guess is the only thing there, it is. There, there are a couple problems with that. They can't, they can't get their pronouns right. Uh, two people is not a person. And uh, the second thing is they haven't even taken office yet, and they're already person of the year. That's sort of like Obama uh, winning the Nobel Peace Prize without having you know, within, a, I think it was a month or something like that after he took office back in, in 2012. Uh, it's, 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 it's just political correctness and, and uh, trying to uh, suck up to the, uh, to the, uh, the Twitter mob. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, what's hilarious is that James said, you know, you just need to get elected. I mean, uh, Trump, uh, Trump got elected, and and I don't think they've labeled him as a person yet, much less person of the year. I think they think he's what do they call him, the orange monster, and all sorts of other things, and you know he's evil this and evil that. And then speaking of Obama and the Nobel Peace Prize, hold some quiet on the set, please, a little lower. Sorry about that. It's the the, the audience is getting a little unruly. You know, our thousands of people that want to stay be closer. To, to the camera. Anyway, um, and I'm, I'm looking at what Obama did uh, or thinking about what Obama did as president to aid peace. And other than setting the record that I think uh, Trump broke for murdering people at long range with drones, um, if, that, if that helps peace, and appeasing uh, people all over the world and being outmaneuvered like a child by the Chinese as they, you know, cemented their military installations in the middle of, if that's, if that, you know, if they knew his plan and, and, and we're going to give him some props for doing that. And then I look at what's happened under the Trump administration, North Korea and South Korea gave, they got to the table and talked. Um, Israel has normalized relations with how many Arab countries now, counting some of the, the principalities down there? Is it five or six? Which would have been. Oh, see, there's of. Morocco, there's uh, UAE, there's, uh, uh, I forget. Yeah, Lebanon? Right? Uh, so they're talking with Saudi. Yeah, no, there's a bunch. Yeah. Course, so the, 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 the quid pro quo on that is Trump is selling all of these Arab nations drones and, and other weapons uh, as yeah. the uh, as the enticement so i'm not sure how that's going to work out well I, I i think wasn't wasn't obama doing the same thing i'm, I'm not sure but yeah, yeah no, no, obama, but, but this is he's he's up trump has, has increased the uh, the sales more from my understanding so uh you know he, he got uh, trump or he got trump got uh, north korea and south korea to talk i don't see that much has come, has come of it but nevertheless, if uh, a Democrat would have done any of those things, they would get not only the person of the year, but the Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, for you know, a couple of years running. So, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's political correctness, that's all. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's a shame. I keep thinking that there is an opportunity for a conservative slash libertarian news organization to, uh, to um, actually take a big chunk out of the market. I mean, the closest thing you have, and I don't really Fox News, but certainly not libertarian, and kind of a strident form of, of, uh, of uh, conservatism, if you want to call it that. And, I, and I, what, what's shocking to me is that the, there are no newspapers out there anywhere that are even remotely, well, viable financially, but I think there's an opportunity because I think, you know, a conservative slash libertarian or say libertarian leaning conservatives, which is an awful lot of them. I mean, most of America leans kind of libertarian in a lot of things, um, either personal liberties or financial freedom or whatever. But, but they are not being spoken to at all by popular media, by lamestream media by advertising campaigns or anything else are completely being completely ignored. Yet these media folks 
uh, wonder why their ratings are slipping, circulation for newspapers is non-existent, and all the rest of that. I would think the answer is pretty simple. You're you're forcing people to opt out. I, I'm going to quibble with you a little bit on your on your uh, assertion there, on your premise, which is that no mainstream newspapers or media or, or other media are libertarian in orientation. I would point out the the Orange County Register in my soon to be hometown of Fullerton uh, in yeah. Orange County. The Orange are County they still, was, are they still was, owned, was owned by someone who was very very strongly libertarian for many many years and is still. Uh, publishes uh, libertarian Steve Greenhut and, and other libertarian writers, uh, and uh, you know still leans in a libertarian direction. So that I guess that might be the exception that proves the rule. But it's also uh, an example of what you are proposing, which is that a libertarian-oriented uh, mainstream newspaper would be able to or should be able to find support, particularly in uh, a, a part of the country that leans uh, at least nominally uh, conservative. And I would say that with a with the right slant, the same thing would work in a in a uh, area of the country uh, that leans uh, blue as well. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree, and I forgot about the Orange County Register. I know, I know, a few years ago, it's probably been ten now. Um, a uh, an investor came in and bought it, and thought that he could revive the whole the newspaper by simply. Uh, not simply, by hiring a whole bunch of good reporters and writers. And I think within about six months of doing that, he started cutting back. But um, it sure would be nice to have the kind of choice that people have. Well, again, in England, they have a lot of national newspapers. And you can certainly buy uh, uh, newspapers there that have um, different political slants. There's, there's conservative, there's, you know, socialist, there's what we, you know, they they call uh, labor there, and we call wrongly liberal here. And I'd, I'd like to see people have a choice, and uh, and we don't. But other than that rare exception, I mean, there are places in the country where where conservative papers are probably doing well. I know small town newspapers, single newspaper towns that focus on on um, local news, and all all news is supposed to be local, are still doing amazingly well. Yeah. Well, another exception is the Manchester Union Leader, which uh, actually uh, endorsed Gary Johnson back in 2016 after having been staunchly conservative uh, and Republican for uh, probably over a century. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it just brings us to this whole the uh, closed nature of the loop, the closed, the tight bubble that the mainstream media lives in. But I also like to point out that people always have us to turn to if they want their libertarian viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go ahead and move on. A district, a school district in Washington has sparked controversy after they've now claimed that uh, Asian American students are now white. The in terms of the demographics, they are they now mix Asian students and white students in together. Uh, so Asian students are no longer minorities or people of color, according to a school district in Washington. Yeah, that speaks to the need for government to create false uh, conflicts, uh, conflicts that really shouldn't be conflicts. The, the largest overarching conflict, the largest overarching issue in the world or in the, in the, in the U.S. today is the fact that we're uh, ruining the economy in a thousand different ways, not to mention, not the least of which is uh, Federal Reserve money printing, which will bring down our empire just like money printing has brought down every other empire in history. That's not a convenient thing for either Democrats or Republicans to talk about. So they have to create false problems. Uh, and uh, racial uh, problems are one of the most uh, easy to stoke because people have, have their own, you know, everybody has their own fears or biases or uh, preconceived notions when it comes to race. And uh, changing the uh, classification of Asians from uh, people of color to uh, white simply widens the divide between the performance levels of the two different classifications. Uh, and it's an unfortunate thing, but you know, blacks and his, to, largely blacks, but also to a certain extent, Hispanics don't test as well on standardized tests. That's not to say they're not, that they're not just as smart or just as uh, uh, you know, well, well qualified or anything else, because you have to look at people on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. And individual blacks can be, can be absolutely uh, stupendously intelligent. Uh, Thomas Sowell, uh, as an example. 
but if you have a artificial distinction between classes, between races, that leads to all of the affirmative action problems, which uh, annoy the, uh, the uh, people who are now being discriminated against, uh, you know, put in, in, the, uh, in the unfamiliar place of being the discriminated against like, like whites. It's, it's just a, a way of keeping the public's eye off the real ball. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Richard. Um, and and what I thought was shameful to me, the stoking of the racial fires um, prior to this run-up in the election and the, the constant ranting on the part of the lamestream media about racist Trump, racist Trump, racist Trump. Yet it seems to me that, that if you uh, constantly focus on race, that makes you a racist. And if you don't focus on race, but if you focus on the, the American people as a whole. Uh, that or as individuals. You, what's that? Or as or individuals. As individuals. So that makes you colorblind, which is what we, we strive to be. And you focus on, on um, you know, trying to do good, your version of good for the population as a whole and, and the individuals in that population. But it was in the best interests of, of the, the far left leaning lamestream media to help stoke the fires so that they could, uh, you know, get the vote out. And what I find is, is uh, wonderfully entertaining. Uh, the, the exit polls show that uh, uh, growth in Hispanic male vote for, um, for Trump and black vote was even more. I think black vote was went from six to eight percent, or something like that. Richard, you probably know the numbers better than me. And Hispanic was was the same. So, uh, despite the intent of the lamestream media to stoke uh, the racial fires, it, it actually you know didn't pan out. Well, and, yeah, I mean the mainstream yeah. media obviously obviously tends to be uh, uh, substantially liberal, but it's, it's not a democratic uh, thing. It's it's also a Republican thing. Oh, I remember no, Pete Wilson going back and back to the early nineties, running uh, commercials, showing hordes of uh, Mexicans crossing the border uh, as a you know an out now fear campaign, mm -hmm. uh, and Trump used that used that uh, immigration card to great effect in two thousand sixteen, uh, and, and to a to a lesser extent in mm -hmm. two thousand twenty. Uh, it's you know it's using race, using race, making 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 the color of the skin important when it really shouldn't be a consideration at all uh, as far as putting together a fair and just society. Mm -hmm. Well, I can give you guys an explanation on how ridiculous this simplistic view on race is. I have a granddaughter who is half Asian, a quarter white, and a quarter black. What is she going to go to under this? Is she white, black, or Asian? That's whatever, whatever, whatever she wants. I suspect. <laughs> I guess she gets to just gets to tell her what what she wants to be. I today I'm black. Tomorrow I'm white, and I'm Asian when I go home to eat because that's the food they like to eat. I don't understand what this whole thing. It's a mess. This is this whole racial theory. This whole modern racial theory, or I guess they call it critical race theory, is actually dangerous. We're trying to combat racism with more racism, and we actually think we're going to get something other than more racism out of it. And it's and it's just become a uh, it's become a mess. It's the danger of creating this racial this continual race this continual focus on race is actually going to increase racism. It's not going to fight it. Uh, it it's almost like that's the goal. The goal is to increase the amount of racism in the world, not actually to decrease it. Do you want it's they're they're actually acting like they want the opposite of what they claim. Yeah, well, yes, because, yes, yes. because if you can feed off other people's uh, racial fears by stoking those racial fears, you have more power. Yeah, that's well, the yeah. that's the political imperative. Well, and yeah. you've got a lot of people who've got a lot of degrees and a lot of college debt who need jobs, and those. So where are you going to get these jobs? You've got to create them. So how do you create them? You create the yeah, opposite. Critical race theory as a major, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah it's yeah, become a whole. See, there, I think that'll be the next major. And uh, heaven no, help us if already. they actually do forgive uh, student loan debt. Because if they do, then, you know, there's the next major will be uh, racial tension, a uh, master's in racial tension reduction. How about that? Oh, they probably already have that, John. They probably already have that. Speak, but talking about craziness out of California, Oracle is moving headquarters out of Silicon Valley to Austin, Texas, and they are like the third or fourth major tech company in the last six months to, to announce that they're moving. Um, this Cal Exit thing has become a uh, exodus. It's probably a brain drain. I, I remember back in the 1950s and 60s when there was 
a brain drain of uh, Brits coming to America because of the, uh, at that time, a strong labor socialist government in Great Britain. Nobody could make a living in Great Britain. The, you know, the smart people couldn't, you know, get paid for doing whatever they do. So they got the hell out of Britain and came to the United States. It was called the brain drain. We're having a brain drain from California to Texas, to Idaho, to Nevada, to Florida, and other uh, parts across the country. It's the market at work. Whenever uh, politicians create a, uh, a business hostile to uh, thriving, hostile to business, hostile to uh, people being able to provide things for other people at a profit so that both, both the buyer and the consumer uh, come out ahead. When that, when, that, when that environment goes away and the Democrats are, are shooing, you know, trying their hardest to make sure it goes away, people leave and it's not going to be a surprise. Yeah, I think I think it's it's wonderful uh, because um, not only are the, are they leaving, but these are some of the poster children of like Elon Musk. You know, has a huge following uh, amongst uh, you know people who blow up the Twitter universe and on Facebook and all the rest of that, and is the the darling of uh, you know clean energy and the electric car movement and everything else and Oracle. Um, you know, Larry Ellison's a strange cat, but he's, um, you know, the, the center of power in, in uh, he has a lot of clout and a lot of pull. And these people are, are, are being vocal about it. And, and you're right, Richard, in that, that, you know, that we benefited hugely from the brain drain out of, out of uh, England. And I think it was this. Was it the '60s, early '60s, and yeah, and in the '50s and '60s, back back when it was uh, on labor, a labor government. Yeah, and and um, we it benefited the United States tremendously because they they were coming out of wonderful schools with wonderful skills, and we we sort of shared a common language, so there was none of that nonsense that that divided us, and they came here and and had a huge positive impact and. What's going to happen is it's going to have a huge negative impact. But it isn't if it wasn't for the the big chunk of money that the state of California takes out of the pockets of the multimillionaires in Silicon Valley, uh, because they're they are the ones who are paying that highest marginal rate. And every time they get stock options and all the rest of that, it's it's a huge influx of cash for the state of California. And if a part of that goes away, this this crazy house of cards that they've managed to build here with these massive uh, pensions and uh, um, and all the rest that they're paying these these uh, quote unquote underpaid state workers uh, and teachers that that house of cards is going to come down even more quickly I would I would love for it to come down because people voted out but I think um, the uh, the people in power here or what do the, all the articles say uh, uh, committing committing financial suicide by running businesses out so it's going to happen one way or the other. Either people vote it out or, or, or it's going to be self-sabotage. Yeah. Well, sadly, it seems like all the people who are leaving are the people we need to stay to vote it out. So it's just going to have to crash. I think that's kind of the worst. You know, just, I, we're not looking forward to it because it's, you know, for, it's going to hurt a lot of people. But, you know, in the long run, I suppose it needs to happen. But talking about bringing up crashes um, out of New York City. They want to charge three dollars per package for delivery to help fund their transit system. Yeah, coming soon to California. Nobody's riding the transit system, therefore we have to uh, subsidize it in order to keep it, uh, keep the trains running, keep the empty trains running on time, uh, and 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 make the uh, people who are following all of the uh, social distancing and mask wearing, you know, all of that stuff, people who are following that obediently, not going out in public, staying home, and so forth. They have to pay for the people. That uh, that are not riding are not riding the train anyway. It's just it's just uh, it's an example of what in the world is it that we can tax? I think it was Reagan that said, "If it moves, tax it. If it uh, you know something along those lines." I forget the other three parts of the of the quotation, but uh, they're they're coming up with all kinds of weird and strange taxes, and that will continue until uh, until they can't find anything anymore. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I think you're right. And uh, until there's nothing left to steal, you know, the thieves will keep coming back and pointing the gun at you until there's nothing left to steal. And then, then they're going to blame the very people who, you know, that, that, uh, that they stole the money from for the problems. I mean, isn't it California that wanted to tax people 
charge them an exit tax if you leave the state of California. And yeah, I think that's still on, still on the table in, in, in the state assembly, the state, state legislature. Well, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. I, I would say that's got to be patently unconstitutional, but the federal government does the same thing. If you expat yourself, they take a big chunk of of the capital that you're moving to foreign countries. So, you know, yeah, they treat it as, a, as an estate uh, a tax distribu distribution. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's your, it's, it's a death. It's a small <clears throat> death. When you give up that passport, it's a death. Yeah. Well, it's a death for the government. It's just oh, this yeah. notion that you've put people out of work, you force them to, to get more delivery. And then now you're going to charge them extra for it. it it's, it's like these, they have no idea that they're the ones creating their own problems. And then, so they double down and it, do they have no sense of decency? No sense of decency. <laughs> I can't well, even think of the words. So I'm not usually yeah, one yeah. for me out of words, but I'm literally speechless on that. And talk about another one that turns me speechless. We're just going to skip down the page here. North Face, the clothing company, North Face, turned his back on a West, uh, West Texas oil company, uh, ordered some jackets with their company logo on it. And mm -hmm. They've ordered from North Face before, and this year, or North Face said, "No, we don't want to associate with oil companies." And I, I think that's a great story. Thanks for 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 presenting us with the opportunity to talk about that. Uh, turns out that uh, that much of North Face's uh, items are actually made with uh, you know hydrocarbon based material. They're they're shipped on hydrocarbon based trucks. The people that go to Yosemite when you can get into Yosemite to climb in their fancy gear and take their hikes, drive cars to get there. And the, the uh, I guess the CEO of the company was, uh, was kind enough to point all that out in a four page missive to, uh, to North Face, which is, uh, uh, didn't deign to answer or answer uh, any of the reporters that have asked the question. So it's ludicrous, really. I mean, and, and this, this false green thing that we're going, you know, I, I, I love to go off on this. I mean, <laughs> ten what uh, thousands of is it two thousand or ten thousand golden eagles have been killed? I think it's two thousand in the Altamont Pass wind chopper. They like to call them wind farm. Uh, in over the last twenty years, if if you killed one uh, golden eagle, uh, but with a coal fired power plant, uh, they'd shut you down. But, but since this wind power is in favor of, of the greens and they see it as, you know, renewable and not causing any damage, nobody fights them on it. And the same thing with solar power. There are, there are these, all these solar panels scattered all over the place or heat sinks and actually, you know, increasing surface area. It's just, just imagine it's basically like a big asphalt a parking lot. They're heat sinks. Um, so instead of heat falling on these places where they have these solar powers and, and power plants and reflecting back into the atmosphere, um, just like snow does, um, the heat's absorbed. And then you talk <laughs> about, you talk about, uh, the, the batteries, which are just noxious, horrible polluting things that, that, uh, you know, if they weren't made in China, there'd be a big uproar about us making them here because they're nasty. And we've, once these batteries go bad, where are they going to go? We're going to ship them back to China. So this, this whole green thing is ludicrous. And, and North Face, I think, they, wasn't North Face the one that was actually putting in, in the sales, in the little tags inside its jackets, vote the son of a gun out or something like that? Or is there yeah, I don't know about products? that. But I mean, I, I, you know, I, I totally support North Face in making oh, a decision yeah. not to sell oh, yeah. uh, their gear to uh, an oil company in West Texas. And I su totally support uh, Cotopaxi or some other manufacturer of outdoor uh, gear to uh, take up the, the, uh, uh, the mantle and, and, and go ahead and sell to uh, the West Texas oil company. And I'm sure somebody, somebody will step into the breach. That's just the, that's just the free market at work. And if people want to cut off their nose to spite their face, yeah, go for it. You know, well, I have no I, I, I'm sorry, I got carried away, and I absolutely agree with Richard on that. It's a it's free market economy. You should be able to refuse to do to sell your goods or services to anybody. I just think the the ludicrous nature. But no, if, of you're, your if you're if you're North Face or any other company and say I'm not going to sell to oh I don't know uh, Asians, uh, guess how long it'll be before you end up in federal court for. Uh, discrimination. You, you know, there are some people you can discriminate against and some people you can't. That's a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, the real problem is, is the mass hypocrisy is that, you know, they deliver all their products on trucks. Their products get delivered by people in cars, you know, from their Amazon delivery drivers. And yet they're going to say they don't want to have anything to do with the Texas oil company. OK, fine. You don't have to sell their products. You, you know, it's you know, you're probably better off going to somewhere else that wants your business. But at the same time, you know, don't sit there and pretend to be a some morally superior position as you're sitting around making your own massively pollution and, and getting your products to the market. It's it's just kind of the height of hypocrisy. With a couple minutes left, we want a, a pro lead, a pro China news channel in Taiwan was taken off the air. And this is an interesting Taiwan refused to renew the license of the cable TV news portion of a news channel in Taiwan because they routinely promote disinformation. And it gives us what the excuse was. Well, I guess that from what I understand, I don't know that much about it. It sounds like the, the channel that was taken off the air is a chat, a channel that uh, supports the idea that uh, one China and that Taiwan is simply the, the runaway province of uh, uh, the greater China. And uh, obviously, uh, the people in China, people in Beijing are probably very happy about this. Uh, and I don't know what the breakdown in Taiwan is as to whether, as to the percentage of people that are pro mainland versus pro uh, uh, staying, staying, you know, staying their own uh, independent country. But uh, there is a, a tendency, there, there is an impetus for politicians on whatever side of whatever issue you can think of to censor the other side. And that's what we're seeing in the example. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's strange to, to think that there, there are people who would um, promote that, but I guess some people do want to be in Taiwan, do want to be part of China. And, you know, to, Taiwan has had, or, or what do they call it? Formosa, I think, I think uh, Chinese call it Formosa. They, they led the way in improving the standard of living uh, it took mainland China much, much longer to get there. But there are some reasons for that because they left with a bunch of capital and, and the, the middle class and the upper middle class uh, had better educations and all the rest of that. But, you know, I just the, anywhere in the world where you where you try to stamp out opposing views, uh, all it does is is create uh, uh, a news and sound bite for somebody and it turns out to backfire. But again, you know, if if uh, the government closed it down, I guess they did from licensing. I don't have a problem at all with with a, a corporation making that decision. It's just a little scary when governments do it. Yeah, I'm no friend of Chinese and the Chinese government, but I'm also no friend of government censorship. And the use of licensing, as we've seen here, is really just the way to for governments to get businesses to tow the line, tow the party. Yeah, and we're seeing the same thing with the U.S. government going after the social media giants, Twitter, Amazon, and so on. Yeah, it's this, and, and the small businesses, you, you know, you're going to take your license away if you serve, if you serve your food when you're locked down. It's mm -hmm. what they're, it's the tool they're using for control. And that's the part that really scares me. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that it's happening in Taiwan, they're facing the same issues halfway around the world that we were facing here. And that is it for us today from Libertarian Counterpoint. For me, John and Richard, we want to thank you for watching us. We will see you next week. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again.